Howdy of you delicious people. I'm here today to review Death Race 2. So, immediately when you possibly think that, uh, like, Death Race 2 is going to be the sequel for the first one, how is Jason Statham going to be in this movie? What's going on here? Like, is Jason Statham coming back? Is Tyrese coming back? Can they figure out a way, a loophole of something to catch these guys and bring them back for the sequel? And then you'd be like, oh, this is Death Race Origins. <laughs> Which, that's actually what they should have called this movie. Death Race Origins. Uh, so, because... This is to be an origin story of Frankenstein. They could have called it Death Race, the Frankenstein story. And I think that would fall off. That would have fell off the tongue right then and there. The Frankenstein story. Yeah. So. Or probably people would have called it the, uh, the FS. The FS. Death Race, the FS. <laughs> TFS. So, for this film, we have this kind of film feeling like there's a smaller budget. There's even at one point where uh, Checkout, after a character called Ka uh, Callan is to get killed, we have our main character kind of swerving back into the race, and we immediately see a cameraman with this vehicle in front of him, it's Blade is Day, and, like, but I went back, and I paused it perfectly, just like, oh my god, that's a cameraman's car. <laughs> like, I guess they couldn't get every shot perfectly in this film, but I guess they got it roughly good enough. What, they couldn't have copped, uh, cropped out the cameraman in the footage? They couldn't have redone the shot, because... I guess that was a one-off thing. So, I do like Death Race 2. It's a really good origin story. Uh, we have these characters built really well. Uh, there is some slight complaining that I also have to do with this movie. So, like, this movie is not a perfect origin story by and large. Because, of course, we have to just crack down the budget of this film. And to let you know what also is going on in this film, but also what kind of goofy things they do in this film. So besides the whole cameraman thing that we see bright, bright as day, uh, really there's also... There's actually good music in this movie, but you wouldn't know because they butcher the crap out of it. Any music that is to seem to be... Like, nothing that's like, dun 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 Like, if it's actual, seemingly, music in this movie, they remix and butcher the crap out of it. There's this one song that plays in this movie. Uh, there's this song called Switchback. And I actually went out of my way to find this song. And I was like, you know what? This song is actually freaking amazing. And, like, we didn't get a good cusp of it. In this movie, it's like switch back. But like they didn't even barely play in that in this movie. All they played is switch back. <laughs> like some wrangled mess of like remixing and garby gook uh, that goes into the music of this film. And so as I spit on my, uh, spit on my freaking recording device, I had to kind of wipe it off a little bit there. Uh, so, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> so there's actually good music in here, but they butcher the sh out of it, and I hate that. Uh, it kind of feels, God, there's this one other movie that I think was, like, some horror film. I think it was Hack House of Wax, where... House of Wax, the remake movie with Paris Hilton, and I don't know why I even watched that, but it seemed to be trending to people, so kind of had to. So that movie actually has good music in that, and I was like, yeah, I was getting into the music, and then the music would cut off and like, 
mother f or <laughs> like there's this one disturbed song that was in that movie and i was like yeah mm, getting into it and then they like ruined it and i'm like oh my god you ruined a really good disturbed song mother f earth uh so but beyond that in death row in death race 2 we have to build up to the death race so at first there is this uh this kind of fight club prison like scene which in all honesty does start to make this be any one prison movie that you've ever seen because you would have like uh fight movies like undefeated which i think uh vin rames is actually in you would have movies like uh uh like hell from jean claude van damme uh in hell uh that movie check that out that's a really good prison movie plus it's also just a really good jcvd movie that i would possibly recommend just because it's a real interesting struggle of a character compared to a lot of the other movies that he's ever done but i always recommend i basically recommend every every time i do a prison movie i basically recommend in hell for whatever reason but pretty much overall this entire movie is a kind of over copy and paste of a kellen lutz film called arena that came out in 2011 that Really, that movie is actually good, but that movie is kind of really focused on the whole fighting element. And that's what takes place throughout that entire movie, where this film is to be a snidbit of that. But if you go into Arena 2011 and then watch this film, which I would probably suggest doing that, uh, you would probably see a heavily amounts of similarities between these two films. <laughs> But there's kind of a, an interesting visual part of Arena 2011 that just Death Race just doesn't have because it has to look like its previous Death Race movie. At least we did get the Death Race theme from the last film because how exactly would you need to desperately spend a ton of money on that theme song? It doesn't even have a person singing it. It's just... Da, 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 like, that's... That's all it really is. Like, it's it's a common thrust of uh, mix of movies. But, hey, like, when you hear that film, you immediately think... Or when you hear that song, you immediately think Death Race, don't you? Even though I can't even think of what the actual theme song is. Because whatever I did there was probably any song that would sound like whatever. So, pushing on. So, yeah. So, this movie is broken up into two parts a prison fighting death match thing and then uh it transitions into death race because they're trying to figure out how to put together this death race because we find out that it seems uh that vin rames is to own this tv company and he's trying to figure out what to do with these prisoners and for them to fight in this early part of the scene, supposedly their lives are to uh, be better if they're uh, to fight. So I'm like, so is this like Gladiator? But like, even I'm sure the Gladiators didn't get all that good of lives when they had to go and fight for people. So this is kind of almost like Gladiator in some kind of capacity where their lives don't get better and they don't get women also thrown at them at some points in time, too. Speaking of women in this movie, we don't really get to see much as far as nudity. Like, we get to see a lot of side stuff. We get to see, like, splashes of stuff here and there. But we couldn't have gone any further than that. Uh, because more than likely, someone would have had to blend, like, yeah, pay me some big fat cash. Uh, Arena kind of goes into much more in-depth about their, uh, undressed women. So, again, go ahead and check that out if that's what you came here for, was to just see women without clothes on, or just women with barely any clothes on. But I'm overly recommending a movie that's not this. I apologize. Uh, so, 
with that with that said uh what else did i want to say about this film like i would say uh the death race part isn't as important enough as it should. Uh, it kind of feels like we don't get enough kills in this movie. It doesn't seem that... Uh, like, it seems like the people besides 14K and List are kind of interchangeable. We could have gotten anybody in this movie, but I think they tried to mimic the original source material, which is the Jason Statham film, rather than giving a sh about the any other vision or whichever of Death Race. It's basically just like, hey guys, we still have these Death Race cars. What should we do with them? Ah, uh, make a franchise. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> How much were the cars they had with this movie probably held up by just pure strings to put this movie together? Um, but... When we finally get to the death race part, there is some better things they do in this film that I'm like, heck, why didn't they think of that when they did the original death race movie? Especially when we have the one guy who's we called Apache that ends up kind of doing some trick stuff to kill off his people without needing uh, a sword or shield. And so, yeah. Um, so there's something about it that has this back and forth thing about it. I can enjoy this origin story, even though it's definitely to seem at a smaller budget of things. And I can enjoy, uh, bits and pieces about it. The only thing that I probably would also maybe have some kind of con about this movie, con prison film <laughs> the jason statham movie is a lot more aggressive than than this newer most of these newer death race franchise movies are uh so that's the only real legitimate setback that i could possibly have about this uh, this new iteration of of death race that focuses on the frankenstein story it's just the fact that this story isn't as similarity, similarly aggressive as the Jason Statham movie was. But I guess that just kind of comes down to acting, skill, quality, whatever. But Luke, uh, Luke Goss, uh, the guy who plays the main character in this film, uh, Carl Luke... Lucas. So did they just kind of easily just go and just like, how about we just call Luke Luke? <laughs> Let's not take the time. Like no one's going to really care about what his name is. They're just interested in, in uh, like fast cars, fast women and, and really just going in there. So here's also the goofy thing. IMDb, uh, when you're going through this movie, IMDb will say that there's one character called Scars in in the, the death race of things. And I swear, I saw on the screen, it says Scarface. And I thought the announcer said the word Scarface. So is it Scarface? Is it Scar? Let me know because he eventually dies in this movie. So let me know if it was Scars or Scarface because... Immediately, I'm like, okay, that name sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so going going on, so where can you go to find this film? Uh, right now, currently, if you're on Stars, because by and large, you're watching Heels anyways, or a number of Scars con stars content, Scars, Stars content, because more than likely uh you went on there for some reason it seems like stars has a lot of good content so i can justify if you're looking for a movie subscription of some kind stars actually does have some really good content uh it seems that i end up consistently picking and uh and thumbing through their content coincidentally at some point in time but i always have some other convenient way to watch something and I will list that now. 
So, uh, more than likely, this this uh, Death Race franchise may be on a number of different apps. Uh, you can probably go into a Google search and find any number of these things, of which I list here. First off, you can probably go into an app and Google search this. Don't Google Play search this. Google search this. Uh, go into the go into uh, an app called Letter C Movies. With that app, you can pretty much see next to everything. Uh, brand new releases, a lot of shows that you probably won't even know exist because they're on very specific apps. And you're like, oh my god, this show actually looks cool. So on and so forth. You can probably watch anything on that app. But, like, there is some rando things that eventually, if you exhaust the search engine, trying to find the most random thing it probably won't be there. <laughs> and so there also is another app that I suggest called Fox HD Movies. If you Google search that app, you can probably dare in fact find a logo that'll say Fox HD Movies, but the app will say Play 1080p uh, HD Movies or whatever. I've been using both of these apps fairly reliably, and they seem to work pretty well. You can find pretty much anything with questionable quality at some points in time but hey if you want to see a movie for free then by golly go into these apps uh you can also uh google play search a app called tv crush or you can just go on google play and search the word movie app and download something randomly and find out if there are a number of movies that that movie app conveniently has uh you could probably go into an app called Play HD, I think, right now, if you Google search movie apps, and that might be the equivalent to Fox HD movies. And but I would just say just broaden your horizons. With that said, let's go out of our way to go into that double five time territory because it's that customary time yet again. To go into spoiler time, spoiler time, it's about that time again to spoil Death Race 2. Origins. Death Race Origins, motherfucker. You know what? I think... Um, I don't remember whether or not Death Race 2 was in theaters or something like that. But I think I did go to the theaters and watch this movie. I'm not sure because eventually my life becomes a blur. But I went into Death Race 2 weirdly thinking in the back of my mind that Jason Statham should have been in this movie somehow. <laughs> that he should have, like, come back weirdly or had a cameo or something. And, like, at the end of the movie, there was nothing. <laughs> I was like, son of a bitch! Like, you can't hand it off and have this be, like, a handoff movie? No? That sucks. Um, that was my real grievance with this film and probably the real reason why I haven't seen it in so long because I thought it was like, oh, it was just gonna, con uh, it was just gonna be a continuance or some kind of something, and I just felt ripped off. <laughs> like mother, f and like when every ever re Death Race movie came after that, I was like, oh, it's not the Jason Statham thing where he's coming back, and no, it's it's this same guy again, <laughs> mother. F -er. uh, I don't know. I just felt ripped off. Uh, because I really liked the first Death Race film. I saw that numerous times over. Uh, just because I enjoyed that movie so much so. So, let's go on to whatever this movie is. Death Race 2 Origins. Because that's what it should have been called. <laughs> I'm going to rename this movie Death Race 2 Death Race Origins. Uh, so... <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna give it a way extended, longer title name than it actually deserves. So pushing on. So in the very beginning of this film, we have Sean Penn or Sean Bean, Sean Ben, Sean Bean in this movie, the guy from Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, the guy in the Lord of the Rings movie who gets <laughs> in his chest and he's like ah, and he falls over and. <laughs> And in Game of Thrones, he ends up getting a foot, 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 like freaking head off. Spoiler for anybody who has never seen 100% of all of Game of Thrones. Check that out. 
if you've never even heard of it in your life, what is a Game of Thrones? Go ahead and go into any of the number of things that I've listed to you, and you could be able to see Game of Thrones now for whatever reason. There's probably a lot of bootleg things out there. You could probably go on YouTube right now and watch the whole thing of Game of Thrones in one fell sitting because YouTube just pirates everything. It even pirates me. It goes R, and I go R back at it, and rated R. Pushing on. <laughs> I've taken too long to waste too much time. So, Sean Bean is to play Marcus Kane in this film, and so Marcus and Carl are getting together to orchestrate that Carl is going to uh, do this bank robbery, and he is to be the getaway driver. The goofy thing about this is Luke is the getaway driver, correct? But... He's supposed to take complete control of the situation of the whole bank robbery. And he's not even in the bank. <laughs> I guess he's just controlling it from the outside. Just like, hey guys, like, uh, shake it twice for America or something. Come on guys, hurry it up. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> Things are happening. So... Because, uh, like, Marcus is kind of questioning whether Luke can pull this off. But then here's also the, uh, the on top of it, even more goofy thing. Marcus says, like, hey, if I'm going to make sure that you can't pull this off, I'm going to make sure you can't pull this off by giving you a car that stands out way more than anyone could ever have a car stand out in their life. <laughs> this bright yellow car, uh, and guys, I don't know freaking cars. I'm assuming, like, I would just immediately go with a Mustang, uh, and I'm hoping that's correct because I didn't Google search, hey, what are the cars used in Death Race? Because I could care less. Because <laughs> it's, like, I'm not a car person, but weirdly I like race films. Especially if it has that, like, Mad Max, uh, dark and grungy, rusted approach to it. Because that easily wins me over. Because I can easily be won by that. Check out a movie called Doomsday. Uh, that kind of is a dark and gritty kind of film that is to have this kind of, like, Snake Plissken, uh, Escape from L.A., Escape from New York kind of approach to it. Uh, so go ahead and check out a movie called Doomsday. I don't know where to freaking see it, uh, but check it out anyways. Go inside of it and realize that you're like, this is a goofy movie. I don't know what he recommended this for me for, but pushing on. So Carl goes to this bank and is to, of course, orchestrate this bank robbery again from the outside just the smartest plan ever, right? This guy is the boss of this whole ordeal, but he's doing it from the outside. So, it just bothers me. So, Lucas is to see two cops arriving into the bank, and so Lucas is telling the guys, to like, hey guys, abort. Like, the cops are coming. Get the heck out of there. And so now Lucas... Without mask on, grant you. <laughs> this guy, no mask. There's guys with like a billion masks on, but this guy. Well, there are some people with masks and some people without masks. So, Lucas goes in the bank to go and take down these two cops. Doesn't shoot them, just kind of like uh, punches the crap out of them and takes them down. And so... The hilarious thing is the other bank robbers are calling Lucas stupid. <laughs> and so, it's like Lucas was telling them, get the heck out of here. They were going to die because Lucas wants to completely avoid having anyone die in his presence. He doesn't want anyone shot, no one killed, no one whatever. So all of a sudden... They end up trying to leave because everyone gets this fat stack of cash and runs off. Justifiably, we actually have a bank robbery 
that it seems like the money stolen actually makes sense to me. It's not like, hey guys, we're going into a bank and stealing like $2 billion and they have seemingly like 50000 in some briefcase and it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> it seems like there's a rational amount of money that these people are to take from where they are to take from. So good point on that movie. So Lucas and his men are making their way out all of a sudden to have one uh, police security guard esh like guy who gets up and shoots one of Lucas's men. And now Lucas has to fire back and shoot this guy. And so now Lucas has this mortified look upon his face. He's like, oh. <laughs> I didn't want to kill anybody. <laughs> and so now everyone is to run off. And so these burglary guys, uh, and for some reason, this feels so much like the movie Transporter for some goofy reason, which is another Jason Statham movie. So did they blatantly rape? Oh my God, I said the horrible word. Rip off. Uh, I didn't mean to say that. That was a... Ugh. Did they immediately try to rip off Transporter in this film? <laughs> I was like, what the f is this? Like, this is, this seems too much like Transporter. And so these bank robbery guys are to go and take a bunch of grenade grenades. Good God, I, if I could talk today, that would be great. We're just popping off this day, and already I'm just butchering words as we go along. My apologies, but we'll, we'll get to it. So, a bank robber tosses grenades off uh, to have them land nearby all these cop cars. And so the cop cars all explode, and now Lucas is just really really ticked at this point just wanting every single one of these guys to get the f out of his car because <laughs> he's so just upset at this point and so lucas who is to eventually get caught there's nowhere for him to go and so he ends up getting arrested and immediately goes and heads off to the island of misfit toys which is the death race island and so marcus who has now like seen lucas going off to prison is like okay well i want him dead like i know he's probably going to squeal like a pig because there's only so long that he can hold out and he's probably going to squeal on Marcus because Lucas wasn't going to make a deal for anybody and he was going to be loyal. But Marcus is just like, well, considering Lucas is going to prison for a life sentence and considering there might be some people that want to event, uh, get at uh, Lucas and beat him up. Like, yeah, there's only so long that Lucas can probably hold on, hold off and not want to squeal on Marcus and get him in prison for the rest of his life. So, Marcus now is to put a million dollar bounty uh, on Lucas. So, now we make it to this prison. So, Lucas is to, uh, like, seemingly be a part of of this uh, prison, of course, uh, as far as, like, it seems that he is not to be a loner or whatever. Like, it seems like he is to quickly find friends at the, in this movie. Because Lucas is heading off on this bus. And so we now have a list who is to arrive with Lucas in this film on this bus, like, weirdly together. So this one hillbilly... Uh, con artist is to tell List to shut up because List just keeps rattling off all this information and 
so Lucas kind of tells the hillbilly guy, well, hey, how about you shut up? <laughs> so both Lucas and List immediately friends. So they go off into the prison. And so it seems that also we have Luke easily start to just kind of just mix it up, make friends. Uh, latching himself onto a guy named Goldberg, who Lucas weirdly calls a Mexican Jew for whatever reason. No offense to anybody. Just saying what they call him, weirdly enough. So, uh, so Lucas goes in to find out that this prison is to put together these death matches. Uh, death matches that are to be put into this certain kind of uh, location that is to have like a bus inside of it and have a bunch of uh, swords and shields, uh, little logos for guys to eventually step on so that way they can at some point get some kind of safety where like the whole shield part of it Weirdly, just, like, uh, is to be a goofy thing that I don't think they try to use much. I think they always use the sore part of it in this whole deathmatch thing. So, it seems that 14k was to have 14 kills in this, in this deathmatch. And so, 14k and some other guy are to fight and so it seems that uh and i think this is xander so 14k and xander fight it out and there are some prisoners that go on to complain that maybe this death match could quite possibly be rigged but everything has to be rigged right when you really look at reality tv shows there's a lot of times where reality TV shows are actually rigged. <laughs> they really are. Like, there's probably people that could easily have figured out how to actually work a number of the obstacles put in front of them. But they're like, oh, I'm supposed to leave today? Okay, well, I'll just really just take my sweet molasses time because it seems like this guy obviously needs to win the show. But hey, you're going to give me a fat check right after this is all over? Yes? All right then. So, September Jones is to, I guess, be some swimsuit model uh, Miss uh, Universe girl who is, uh, of course... The same person we see on The Walking Dead called Maggie at some point, Lauren Cohan. Or Cohan? Cohan? Let's go with that. Uh, so, September Jones is to have slept with every single one of the judges, whether I guess they were male, female, or a goat, possibly, right? <laughs> Two of the one, her pageant thing that she won, uh, and so good for her. But that just tells us that it seems like she's gonna sleep her way to the top, which is evident when it seems that September Jones lines herself with Wayland, who is Ving Rhames in this movie. And they consistently have these like little times where they're like kissing and all kinds of stuff. It's probably grabbing on her butt, who knows. So, <laughs> Whatever. Like, it's just setting up uh, uh, the villain of this story, I guess. Because the warden or somebody who is to be the warden-ish-like type in this movie is to always be the main villain. Because the actual warden in this, in this film is honestly, like, he's a forgettable character. Uh, like, he's barely in this film, and he just eventually just gets the boot because he's not really... And a, a relevant enough character, but we do have that one scene where he gets that, yeah, kind of part at the end here uh, of this film. So, 
14k and Xander having this death match, and and also we had that information from List, and so Lucas says that oh, like I get the whole List thing because you can just pop out a List for anything, right? And List is just like eh, yeah, so. Uh, so 14k fighting Xander, and so we really get this fight out, we get it, we get it going on, uh, it seems that at some point there's this real back and forth here, but 14k is of course to, uh, go on and try to have Xander yield, and he won't, and so 14k just goes and uh, hoists up this like battle axe of sorts, and 14k just tells everybody that Xander gave up, which he didn't. And so 14k walks off, and September Jones is now really upset with 14k because 14k lied. But 14k doesn't like to really kill anybody. Uh, supposedly, we build up 14k as this. Former triad like guy that, uh, like, do I guess doesn't want to kill, uh, or probably doesn't want to kill a defenseless person. So, now that that match is over, and it just seems that September Jones cannot trust 14K, we have a scene where now Lucas is to go off to take a shower. Weirdly by himself. <laughs> There's no other make naked man in this shower. And that weirdly just consistently happens in this film. <laughs> like, where we have a guy just showering alone. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why are guys showering alone in this film? Because it doesn't quite make sense to me. You would think everybody would be showering like, at one, at one time, you would not think just a random person would be showering at whatever times. It just doesn't make rational sense to me, but it is what it is. So, Carl is showering it up, just kind of really washing himself down to have September Jones be going and telling, like, Lucas, hey, like, uh come with me to be uh, a person in my death matches. Because uh, it seems like you have a lot of potential, and it seems that Lucas probably has much more of a name for himself than probably anyone else does. So, and plus he has a look about him, so yeah. So, Lucas is to go and lock lips a little bit with September Jones, but... Really, there's just to be this teasing moment where Lucas is just to be like, no. <laughs> Go and find someone else to do your dirty work. And so Lucas walks away. So now the next death match is to come upon us. And so we have a guy named Big Bill who arrives uh, to go and fight whoever upon this episode. And they end up going and grabbing List. Divorce list to now fight against Big Ben. And I'm sure that was so randomly chosen, right? That wasn't purposely done, I'm sure, right? Uh, so... List goes down there, and so Lucas is like, Oh my god, like, I need to help out List. Like, it's the right thing to do. And plus also, like, List is technically fighting my fight. So, List... List goes out there and is trying to fight off this big, massive guy. And so Lucas goes and jumps this fence, goes in the fight, and starts beating up Big Ben. And so Lucas is to uh, see a girl named Katrina Banks, who I guess is to hold up certain number cards, like UFC you, like always does, where you'd have this like bathing-suited woman that is to go and like circle around the ring. I'm like, ooh la la, and like mm, some of that. And then like she walks off. <clears throat> and so like you have always like those kind of things going on in boxing matches or like, I guess it's just a traditional thing. 
But hey, it always works. You get freaking uh, guys or ladies knocking the crap out of one another. And then you get like attractive uh, female presences or... Is there is there male guys that are kind of, hey, it's round two, son of a... And then walks off. Anyways, I've taken way too much time going off to the side with this. Let me rein back in. Uh, so... Uh, Lucas goes and fights off Big Ben, and we weirdly have a match of flamethrowers for some goofy reason, because Big Ben is going to this, uh, bus, and is to have this massive flamethrower. I'm like, this has got to be the stupidest weapon you can introduce in a deathmatch thing, because this is the one thing that you can't really do in a movie all that well. Because, like, unless it's, like, the running man, then by golly, just do the heck out of it. Uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Running Man. But it doesn't really work anywhere else. Flamethrowers rarely ever work in a movie, period. And this is a cheaper film. <laughs> but they're doing flamethrowers. So, coincidentally, Lucas is to also go and find a th flamethrower also... But it's just them, like, blasting these flamethrowers over and over and over, using it for reasons that I don't quite understand. If we were to have actually given or had a Frankenstein-like moment, which now we can understand why Lucas became Frankenstein, this probably would have been the perfect moment, but they don't do that here. They gotta build up to the Frankenstein moment. They gotta give you this point where you're like, oh no, Lucas... No. <laughs> How could you have done this to this character that I've invested in through most of this film? Or maybe a good portion of it, because you may or may not be fully have been paying attention throughout the entire film. Maybe checking your phone, seeing uh, seeing if Buddy Ray Ray had called you at some point. So moving on. So... <laughs> We have waste of time thr flamethrowers here, and really just a riot just breaks out within the deathmatch prison esh like thing, to where like fists are flying everywhere. Um, Lucas does get the better of Big Ben, but it's also the point of situation where uh, Lucas is to tell, "Hey, Big Ben, if you want to live, uh, like stay down," kind of a thing. Like, he doesn't really beat him. It's just, like, so... They end up disconnecting the deathmatch, death race, whatever thing. Uh, the death fighting thing. Fight club. Prison style. Prison edition. So... It seems that September Jones was desperately wanting this riot to give her some ratings because it seems that they have been plummeting lately. But... The warden is to come in and, like, is to just squash the show and just, like, no, like, there's a riot going on. That's much more of a focus. Get the heck out of here. This isn't going to help your ratings, so, like, just turn it off. So, September Jones goes off to Wayland, who, again, is Ving Rhames. And she used to be like, okay, well, we need to go and, uh, like, revolutionize, revolu revolutionize this whole, like, concept, what we're doing here. We need to change what we're doing. Because Lucas is to go off when he's not fighting people and is to go and, uh, like take apart cars. So I'm like, this is kind of like the Sylvester Stallone movie where the where Sylvester Stallone was in prison and he was like gearing up cars and there were some other kind of young guys that were trying to just escape from prison because they're just young people that don't know any better. And so, yeah, uh, I remember what that Stallone prison movie was. It probably like... It feels like a movie that has this, like, severely generic title, like a No Way Out or something like that, or... <laughs> like, a lot of, honestly, a lot of, like, Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, where it's like, 
uh, he always has like a no way out or sudden death. Well, sudden death is kind of unique, but uh, like double impact, <laughs> which is a good movie, but has just the goofiest name. Uh, like, uh, God, what was, there was some other ones, uh, like Lionheart. What even is Lionheart? Uh, it doesn't quite make sense. Uh, Kickboxer. There you go. Uh, even though those, some of those are good movies and I like Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, JCVD movies, but still, uh, let goofy names, right? And they didn't get better. They didn't get better either. So pushing on, they just reused a lot of the successful ones and brought them back. So uh, I can't I can't stop the tangents. It's it's the way of life. So uh, so Lucas is uh, where are we now? Oh, it's after the death race match. So. It seems supposedly Lucas is to be locked in to be part of this death race or the part of this death match thing, but they change it and they revolutionize it. And so now September Jones is coming up with this concept to feed to Ving Rhames and all of his sponsorship people. But Waylon actually comes up with uh, like the second half of it where September Jones just kind of comes up with the death race concept where like go and take the, the shield and the sword and put it onto the death race that is actually at the prison. And so Waylon turns around and is like, well, hey, how about five matches and someone goes free? No matter what they did, no matter how many crimes they committed, so someone could have committed a billion crimes and then like, gone on, done five races, got scot-free, and then went out of his way to do a billion other crimes, went right back into prison, win five races. Because <laughs> this guy, this character, might have been so good at what he does <laughs> as far as racing goes that he can basically get away with murder he can <clears throat> he can murder a million people go into prison and then like like hey guy like <laughs> death race sure <laughs> i'm gonna go in and win 10 15 50 races <laughs> basically there would be no law at that point Basically, this guy could create a purge-like scenario where everybody would just be going and just killing people off and just going to win these races. And, like, doesn't it make a weird incentive for, like, people to just realize there is no law, technically? But they would also die in the process if everyone was to just have an incentive to weirdly go into prison. Uh, whatever. So... So they come up with the concept, and so now they have to come up with drivers. And so it seems that these guys uh, are hearing about this whole death race thing. And Liz is just like, well, hey, I might be tempted to go into death race because, uh, like, I might get out of prison. And everybody else is kind of thinking that, too. They're like, yeah, like, that seems like a really good incentive. But not everybody's really good at actually driving. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, plus you have to actually win the race. You just can't participate five times and you're free. Uh, like this is in Suicide Squad where they just kind of limit, limit your sentence down and then get you, uh, like a jail out of free card. It doesn't work that way. So... So we go off and we have all these people scrambling to uh run off to get to certain cars and so it's kind of like the original death race movie where conveniently jason statham is to make it into the one car lucas is to make it into this frankenstein car like before because we have katrina who is going and smacking and pushing certain guys that are trying to get into her car. She's like, oh, hell no. And she like kind of 
like kicks him out. So Luca, Lucas makes it into her car. And so she's like, oh, okay, like I can kind of deal with you. So uh, Lucas goes and uh, has weirdly these earpieces so that way he can actually hear the drivers. I'm like, well, why didn't they have that in the original movie? Like, why did they have just this radio station? Like, did they... <laughs> I don't know why they had to goofily do that in this film, but in the original, they went with, like, radio things. I don't get why that was. It doesn't quite make sense. So, now we're in the death race. We're inside of it. We're living into it. So... Now we have to go to seemingly the not quite that important part of the film, which is Death Race in all honesty. So we have certain characters. I think that, like the first three characters, like their deaths don't seem to matter for the film. And it feels obvious. Like we're just seeing spots where uh, like guys are just to randomly die off. And it's just not that exciting. But uh, like, also, this race isn't that long either, <laughs> sadly enough. So we have Scars or Scarface uh, getting killed off here, uh, I think, right away. Uh, we have Sh uh, Sheik, who ends up getting killed by Apache. And Apache goes and uh, is to be side by side with Sheik's car. He gets out of his car, lets his navigator drive... And so he jumps onto the other car, has a little shiv that he goes and stabs Sheik in the neck. And of course, that car goes and careens and, and explodes and, and whichever's. So Hillbilly is to, of course, be behind Lucas. And I guess Hillbilly had gotten a shield. And so he's blasting uh, Lucas's vehicle. And so now Lucas is to eventually need to kill off Hillbilly, of course. So I think we get a part where, uh, I think we get here where uh, Lucas is trying to use the smoke to have Hillbilly eventually, cr no wait, maybe that's, maybe that, no, I think that's Callan. Um, I think for, I think for Lucas here, I think there might be in, there might've been a part where, uh, like we have face to face with Hillbilly and, uh, Lucas and I think, uh, Hillbilly crashes his car and dies that way. I think something like that, some goofy, weird thing like that. So Like, but we have all three of these characters die. I don't know the specific reason, because this movie does not make it important enough. Sadly. Uh, so, it seems that, uh, I think 14K is to have been the winner so far of the the rounds, and so... It seems that he is to have gone on to seemingly be the champion so far of this whole thing. But we go into the next round, and I think Lucas ends up winning this one, which uh, we find out when someone is to win these rounds, they get a woman, they get a woman uh, to do whatever they want with them. So in the second round, we immediately have pa Apache, who ends up getting killed off. And so, Apache ends up flipping his car. And if you kind of look at it kind of slowly, you can kind of see when Apache's car is to flip. It's actually supposed to flip back into the right way to where he's just kind of, he can drive off. But they cut it perfectly to where... It doesn't seem like his car is going to flip a specific way that is to be the correct way. Instead, they just position the car to make it seem to make it like flip one way. And so now Apache 
is to now have to correct this car to get it back of the place where it should have gone to anyways before they were to cut this <laughs> to cut this take so because flipping cars are is a hard thing to do and i'm sure they weren't going to go through numerous takes to try i'm sure they were just going to edit it to try to just be like well either way we're just going to cut away so but still like they could have cut away a little bit better a little a tiny bit at some point to where it doesn't seem like the car is going to tip back over and then you have to cut it to make it look goofy. So Apache is now trying to flip and push his car over. And this is not a muscular man of sorts. And so Big Bill goes and is to push, uh, of course, Apache's car and Apache into some thing which is to kill him off. I think it might be the the skull thing that ends up crushing the cars. They didn't really do much of that in this show or in this movie, but like I think every once in a while they they presented it, but they didn't do a cool effect with it. Like they kind of just ugh, they kind of just it was a weak thing to do. So Callan is the next person who is to get killed off. And so here I think is when we get the 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 sequence where Lucas is to use his smoke and Callan is chasing after uh, Lucas and Callan accidentally smashes into a wall. And here's where we get where Lucas is to kind of flip his car around and... We see the cameraman. And so... Now, Xander and 14K are racing off. And 14K is to accidentally flip his car. And... So... Xander has guns at the ready to shoot 14K when he gets out of his car. And Lucas is just running off to win this race. But... Instead, what he decides to do, because 14K is a triad, and so he's like, aha, well, I know what I can do now. I can come back there and save 14K, so that way he can do and, and can help me uh, try to save my life. Because uh, supposedly 14K, when Lucas is to... Uh, is to save him, it's like, well, hey, like, we're gonna trade a life for a life. Like, if you saved me at some point, then I'm gonna have to repay the favor. It's a weird, I guess, thing of which, of which that 14k is to do, weirdly. So, now, Lucas is to go on and, uh, like, push... Xander's car uh, against this wall and so uh, Lucas ends up after that going off and and racing off to get to the finish line and so we have Lucas, who is to be the winner out of this. Uh, there's to be this one spot where it seems that Big Bill is to choke his navigator. And Big Bill's navigator, I think, is to go and kill him off. So I think the ending was supposed to be that uh, it was going to be Lucas and 14K uh, going at this. Uh but I guess they just go into a completely different match. And I guess they just call Lucas the winner out of this. Which I'm like, okay, like, this seemed to have only been, like, out of, like, legitimately... This only seemed to be, like, out of two rounds. Why is there seemingly a number of cars present at the end of this movie for whatever reason? Like, am I seeing things? I'm not... Am I not seeing things correctly? Was at the very end of this movie supposed to be the the... Showdown between 14K and uh, 
and Lucas, was I missing something here? Because... Now we find out in the second round that it seems that Lucas's car was sabotaged. And so now the team is going after this guy named uh, Rocco for believing that he tampered with Lucas's car. And so List finds this guy in the shower, stabs him kills him and like yeah that's justice for lucas and so we also have the moment where uh big bill was uh shooting off all of his rockets and so big bill was shooting off all these rockets and it accidentally is to Go on and hit... I don't know yet. Am I missing something here? Feel like I am. I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself somewhere. Um, I think there might be some... There might have been another race out of this. Or there might have been... like I don't think that this all happened in one thing. Because Lucas won some round. He ended up sleeping with... Uh, he ended up sleeping with Katrina, which supposedly I'm sure they probably recorded that for TV purposes, but neither one of them cared. So the next race, uh, supposedly Marcus had gone on to talk to Katrina and said, hey, like, if you help Lucas get killed here, you go to uh, you get out, you get out of prison free. Like, Lucas will pull strings. Or Marcus will pull strings. Why am I seeing Lucas? Marcus will pull strings. Marcus is talking to Katrina and pulling strings to get her out of prison if she kills Lucas's character. So, Big Bill at one point had talked about, like, getting a million dollars to kill Lucas. And so, that was to actually be the goal at some point. But... So I think we head on to one race with Big Bill still being alive. Because, like, that's the dissension of ranks that end up heading towards the end of this film. Because we have to have Big Bill go and shoot off his rockets and go and turn Lucas into Frankenstein. So that happens towards the end of this film. Where Big Bill ends up shooting off his rockets... Uh, scarring heavily uh, Lucas, uh, having the whole group try to go out and try to open Lucas's car. And I'm very confused how Lucas actually isn't dead at this point because when you look at the other Death Race film, we had them go and take this napalm and... Uh, chuck it onto some other person's car and light it on fire and uh, do a pretty good job of taking that car out. But that's just a splash of napalm going onto this person's car. This guy has a whole container of napalm in this car. Why doesn't this car explode right away and kill Lucas off? Because story, right? Because story. <laughs> and we have all these characters that are really trying to consistently try to keep touching the car or asking somebody to help, and no one will, no one can. There's not fire extinguishers that any of these characters are to have in their hands to douse out this car, which doesn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't they have found a fire extinguisher at any part to try to douse out these flames? to try and get Lucas out of some portion of this car to avoid flames. It just feels like Lucas should have burned to death, but he didn't, weirdly enough. So Lucas gets retrieved from this car, and so it seems that September Jones is to say that Lucas is now dead. Only the Frankenstein character remains because... Lucas is to 
hide his identity because he wouldn't want a girl like Katrina to find out that Lucas is this Frankenstein-like character. But I'm sure she ends up finding out regardless. <laughs> so, now we end up having Lucas or Luke into this getup and we have him put on this mask and we can kind of tell that it doesn't look like the exact same kind of approach as the other Death Race movie where of course like Jason Statham is to kind of take off the mask where this one is to just be this kind of like okay pop on this thing and like it just like it looks goofy but it also has to be tailor made for certain characters so like it's gonna have to shift and change and whatever at some points in time so uh september jones is to mention that she has been she had done a trailer for the frankenstein character and it seems like a lot of people are accepting of that so frankenstein is to come onto the track and everybody's a little spooked uh it seems that this guy is to uh, not really talk to people, not to be as kind as Lucas was. So Frankenstein is to go into his car. And so now we have uh, Katrina who's to ask like, hey, Frankenstein, what a name, right? Like, uh, you got a real one? And so... Carl is to say before when he meets Katrina, she, he uh, she asks him, it's like, well, hey, like, do you have a name? And he's like, yeah, I have one. <laughs> and so immediately we come and, and have that line come back around where uh, Katrina is like, well, hey, like Frankenstein, what a what a what a name, right? Like, but do you have a real one? <laughs> and so. Lucas is like, yeah, I have one. <laughs> like, just, But there's never an answer. And so I kind of like how they came back to that line. And I'm like, oh, they're coming back to that same time where like it's a basically a re uh, reintroduction of this character. But it's to just kind of tease the fact that everyone is to kind of figure out that Lucas is to be Frankenstein already. Because Liz goes back to talk to... Goldberg and says and says that once uh Frankenstein is to go and run down September Jones and like Goldberg's like oh my god I wish Lucas could have saw that and Liz is like well maybe he maybe he did Goldberg maybe he did <laughs> really just saying that like yeah Lucas is Frankenstein it's obvious like, uh, if Lucas, like, they didn't, like, they probably should have gotten reports seeing whether or not that he was dead. Um, but it's whatever. So, we also had 4K, P, 4K, 14K's people go off to make it to Marcus's home. And so... The triads go and kill off Marcus, and they successfully do so. And Marcus is like, okay, who sent you? And so the triad, the triad is give Marcus some trinket, saying that, yeah, Lucas did. And so Marcus is like, oh, Lucas, you just, you are, you're such an intelligent guy. <laughs> smart move, smart move. So Marcus, of course, gets killed, uh, gets dot, gets deathed, gets murdered into a pool, shot numerous times to make sure he's dead. And so, man, that's got to suck. Not only are you getting shot, but then you drowned on top of that. Well, I guess technically when you are to die, you're probably to drown in your own blood anyways. So, yeah. Uh, you would have thought they would probably try to make it quick, cause like give the guy some some something, right? Like not have him die brutally, <laughs> but it's whatever. So that's the way this movie is to send off. Uh, and plus, also I'm gonna try to send my way out of here, cause I don't remember how long this movie was, but I think I spent way too long going reviewing this. Also, so I'm gonna get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.